Early summer is my favorite season. It's a time of blossoming, becoming. Up here in the Vermont mountains, summer feels more like a dream than reality, the kind of dream you want to make last forever. During this season, I love taking the time to step away from work and writing projects and simply notice the world around me. Notice the simple things that we're often too busy to notice. New flowers opening their faces to paint the garden every color imaginable. The scent of lilacs blooming. A flock of baby geese going for their first swim. A fledgling testing her wings for the first time. Afternoon tea and the smell of blueberry pie baking in the oven. These are the things that make me feel truly alive. These are the things I remember about summer. Accomplishing goals is a wonderful thing, but at the end of the year, to-do lists are not the things I remember. As good as it feels to achieve lofty goals, the feeling can't be compared with the joy I feel basking in the wild beauty of summer. pretty. It is gorgeous. I love the two-tone, how it's like kind of um, has like a cream and purple. The orchids will like go into bloom and then they go through like a, a long season of not being in bloom. So I usually always have like one that's in bloom and then the other ones aren't. This is a little African violet that I found Beautiful. that I thought was cute. So I'm gonna see what kind of flowers come from her. I don't even know what this flower is, but I just thought it was really cute and it kind of reminded me of my book cover. This summer, I've been working on revising and rewriting a novel I drafted back in 2020. You've probably heard me reference it as The Lighthouse Book, because it doesn't have an official name yet. But it does involve a lighthouse and lots of cozy, nostalgic summer vibes. 
It's a contemporary set in the Pacific Northwest during the 90s, and I'm kind of in love with it. During the month of June, I took a virtual writing retreat, and a lot of you guys joined me for that adventure. It was so wonderful to be able to focus 100% on my book during this time and really immerse myself in the world of my characters. During the writing retreat, I revised over 100,000 words of the book, deleted about 20,000 words, and added a few thousand of a new subplot that I think brings the story to a whole other level. I'm really excited for you to read it one day. Because I spend so much time sitting at my laptop writing, I like to take breaks whenever I can and do something that takes my mind off my work for a little while. For me, one of those things is baking. On this day, I made a blueberry pie because nothing is more summer than blueberry pies. I'm no expert baker, but I used to write a food blog and bake all the time. Now I just do it for fun, which is so much more relaxing. It's just another reminder to me that not everything has to be about accomplishing something or doing it the best. As long as you're happy while you're doing it, that's all that matters. <laughs> I've lately become a huge fan of romanticizing my life, basically doing special things just to make yourself happy, which in my opinion is one of the highest forms of self-care. And I think it's worth mentioning that this doesn't have to be extravagant or expensive. It can be as simple as making yourself tea in a pretty cup, or decorating your room with flowers, or wearing an outfit that makes you feel like the main character of your life. Another way I love to romanticize the season is by watching my favorite dramas that give me all the good vibes. For me, one of those dramas is BBC's new adaptation of All Creatures Great and Small. It's been acclaimed as the most soothing show on television, and honestly, I have to agree, the cinematography is beautiful, the characters are so well written, and the acting is fantastic. And it gives me all the cozy cottagecore vibes. I've missed you. Missed you too. Mm. Should I stay 
Another one of my favorite nostalgic summertime dramas is BBC's adaptation of Little Women, which is hands down my favorite version. It has gorgeous filmmaking, a brilliant cast, and again, all the cottagecore vibes. This story encapsulates everything I love about realistic fiction, the highs and lows of everyday life, and the simple magic we can find in our own lives if we search for it. As I was watching this episode, an idea struck me to recreate my own Little Women-inspired picnic by a lake. My first stop, the bookstore, of course. Once I packed up the picnic lunch, I wanted to find a beautiful copy of Little Women to read by the lake, because everything is better with books. First, I found two different editions, but I really wanted a hardcover, so I kept searching and, of course, got distracted by other books. Yeah. This one's cool too. That's Jane, you know. <laughs> stay on topic. Abby can't stay on topic in a bookstore. No, I can't ever. Then, at last, I saw it a beautiful hardcover edition sitting on the top shelf. Fortunately, the bookstore had steps for short people like me because this book was the one. This is so cool. It has like letters in it from the characters. So there's like this whole section of Little Women, like this whole chapter where they send letters to each other and I think that's what it is. Like, oh, really? Like, oh my God. This is so cool. I'm so glad I looked up. They shouldn't do that for short people, but... I love it. And I love how it's like... It folds like a scrapbook almost. And like the pages are like old-fashioned parchment. That's what it feels like. That's really cool. Okay, we're gonna get this one. <laughs> for sure.
and the rest followed. A bright little band of sisters, all looking their best in summer suits with happy faces under the jaunty hat brims. So, <laughs> I just finished the last Write With Me live stream writing session of the June virtual writing retreat. And it's been an amazing month. It's just been so, so good to be able to 100% focus on my writing and to really respect creative time and to carve out that time in my schedule and to encourage you guys to do likewise. So it's been so amazing to see the whole community come together for this writing retreat and to watch you accomplish your goals. Like there is nothing more satisfying than accomplishing my writing goals and watching this amazing vibrant community accomplish your writing goals as well. So yeah, I'm happy with the progress that I've made. I don't know when it will be like published and ready for you guys to read, but hopefully sometime in the near future. And I'm just gonna plan on continuing to work on this um, and keep the momentum going until it is finished and until I am proud of it and happy with it and ready to share it with the world. Also coming soon to the channel, lots of new content. I'm really excited because during this writing retreat, I've kind of had some time to reflect on the future of my channel and the different types of content that I know you guys want to see. And so I'm really excited to put together some new resources, some valuable videos and masterclasses and live trainings and all kinds of exciting new stuff coming at you very soon. I'm going to be working on that over the next couple weeks. So yeah, keep an eye out for that and definitely hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss all the new content coming your way. So yeah, that's it. Thank you guys again so much for joining me on the virtual writing retreat. It was so much fun. I'm so glad that we had the opportunity to do this. And of course, it's going to be an annual thing. Comment below and tell me how did your June go? How is your summer going so far? How are your writing projects coming along? I hope you had fun on the retreat and I hope to see you around here even more in the future. Subscribe, like this video if you enjoyed it and thank you again for being here. I love you guys so much and I will see you in the next one. Until then, rock on. Shh.